Hi and welcome to my channel and welcome to another episode. This one about big cameras and a very old church. As those of you who saw my last episode might remember, my latest large camera acquisition was this Kodak Specialist. I actually called it Kodak Specialist 2 in the last video and that's not quite accurate. It's based on the Kodak 2D but it's actually just the Kodak Specialist. Uh, the 2 was a slightly later model. Anyway, that out of the way. Um, this is really largely the story of getting this old girl back to working. And the first thing that I had to do with it was to sort out some pinholes in the bellows. Now, there's a reason I'm surrounded by bellows cameras here. Um, it's really to show you how I repair them if they're not bad enough to require new bellows. And I have a quite simple way of doing it and it's this stuff. This is called Plasti Dip and it's a paint on rubberized compound. This one's black, you can get it in several different colors. So if your bellows are different colors, um, you can match it in to some degree. Um, I ordered brown to work on this camera and they sent black, but that's fine. I used it on the inside of the bellows and put several coats on the pinholes. Now, identifying the pinholes was done with, um, I've got to turn in the right direction to find it, a very bright LED torch. Um, you can use a light bulb. I didn't have anything available to do that. I simply put the LED torch inside the bellows in a darkened room and shone it down and it's the corners where they tend to go more than anything else and identified the holes, left the torch running in and then took a brush and some plaster dip and just painted over the hole till it disappeared. And that's actually really quite um, effective and it will last for a very long time. Um, I should give you a warning, this stuff is fantastic but the fumes from it are really quite horrible and um, you should use it in a well ventilated environment or outdoors. I used it on the uh, Kodak and pretty shortly had no pinholes whatsoever. It's a fantastic thing, it's a little expensive. Um, in the UK that's uh, about £14 for that little pot but I think it will last forever because there's an awful lot of it and you don't use much to repair bellows. Okay, so the other thing that I had to do to get this camera ready to go out and take some photographs was to get a lens on it that had a working shutter. The 207 millimeter, uh, 203 millimeter, sorry, Ektar F7.6, I think it is, that was on there um, as a standard lens. Basically, um, the uh, aperture blades were um, messed up and that's in for repair at the moment and I'm hoping that's going to be fixable. But what I needed to do was to, uh, now I've got it around here somewhere, um, adapt the lens board or the, the aperture to take my MPP lens boards. So, I produced in the workshop this, which is a little adapter, which you can take the lens, you can pop that into there like that. It's very difficult to do in front of a camera. I always mess things up in front of a camera. That's it, and it clicks in pretty much like that. There we go. A little that comes across there 
and we can take this lens out. I'm trying to do it wrong handed to the camera is never a good plan. That's better. We can take that out like that. And we can put this in like this. Um, I won't put it in fully because I can't get around the front of it here. But that allows my MPP uh, lens board to be used on this, which means I've got a lot of versatility because my old travel camera and of course my MPP are both adapted to use those lens boards. So a few images of how I made it. That was on uh, the laser cutter in the workshop. My usual method of a three millimeter laser ply, um, in this case laminated with some MDF on the back because I had to make up an odd thickness and the uh, MDF was about 2.5 millimeters. Uh, all laminated together with wood glue um, and then sprayed black. Um, I made up some little brass fittings to go on it and it was a good one. So, with fitted lenses and repaired bellows, it was time to get out in the field and see what the old Kodak specialist was made of. <laughs> Well, here I am at the gorgeous and abandoned um, All Saints Church in Onga, in Essex, and I'm going to shoot some stuff on the Kodak Specialist, first time. Just going to shoot my warm-up shot, uh, which is going to be these interesting pair of gravestones and we're going to shoot that at around it's indicated a 60th at between 5.6 and 8 okay
that's a good number of images shot. So back home to uh, start developing quite a lot there actually. And All Saints Church really is a remarkable place and I will be going back. All of that was shot with the 150mm lens that's currently on the travel camera. Um, and I'd like to go back with a um, standard lens of around 210 millimeters at some point. Um, but anyway, very, very successful shoot um, and all developed in the Stearman Press 10.8 multi-use tank um, very easily. Okay, um, so I haven't really introduced you to these. These um, have turned up over the past few months. This is a, a Thornton Picard uh, Ruby Standard. And this one is its big brother, um, the Thornton Picard Imperial Triple Extension. Um, both of these need work and still do. They need screens and bits and pieces. But I will be using those at some point as well. And um, yeah, um, so if you've enjoyed what you've seen this time, um, think about giving us a like. And if you want to see some more and uh, see some more about big cameras and medium format cameras and all kinds of good stuff, then um, think about subscribing. It does the channel a huge amount of good, as do your comments. Um, so, until I see you again, take care and take pictures.